This is the presentation for the paper, A Deep Image of the City, Generative Urban Design Visualization. Authors, Ariel Neumann and Kent Larson from the MIT City Science Group. For centuries, cities were planned very much like this, top-down, focused on the shape and the design of the city, but not so much on the experience and transitioning experience of moving through the city. Some of these top-down ideas found their way to the urban planning and urban design of the 20th century with the project by Courbusier for Paris, as well as some of the projects in the city of New York and many other big cities of the 1950s and 1960s. Some of these ideas even found their way till today in many newly developed cities around the world, which is top-down approach was heavily criticized by certain movements throughout the 1960s, first and foremost by Jane Jacobs, and the idea in which we need to experience cities not from top-down, but actually from the point of view of the user, from the pedestrian point of view. This idea was also finding its way through the work of Kevin Lynch in his book, The Image of the City, in which Lynch was proposing a new taxonomy and a classification way for urban environments in which district nodes, edges, landmark, and paths are creating a comprehensive view of the city, not so much looking into the details of the urban environment, but as the holistic experience of using and moving through the city. Lynch continued that work in 1964 in his project, The View from the Road, in which he documented transitioning through cities to explore what he called imageability. How do we image the city, visualize it, and understand it? He was then creating a series of visualization aids, mapping tools, and renderings to communicate that kind of imageability. However, Lynch and other researchers of that era were limited by their technological capabilities to imagine cities that are not yet exist. In 1961, researchers in Sweden created what is known as the first computer graphics, rendering of a planned highway extract. That was the beginning of an era in which new tools like the Sketchpad and the CAT tools were created one after the other, allowing researchers, designers, architects, and planners to manifest non-existing environments, buildings, streets, objects, through the usage of computational technology. All the way till today, in which those tools are allowing us to create almost seemingly realistic renderings and visualizations of urban environments, up to the point it's hard to decipher what is real and what is not. But there are some limitations with current and existing tools. First and foremost is the complexity and cost of existing tools. If we want to create high quality renderings and high quality visualizations, the learning curve and the cost of tools is still high. If we want to create real-time visualizations, the challenge is even higher and there are not many tools and many ways to create high quality real-time visualizations of urban environments. More so is the fact that even if we create high quality renderings, in many cases, they're just used as marketing tools, not so much as true measurement and analytics tools to understand the impact of urban design and urban planning on the city. Moreover, in urban planning and urban design, we usually suffer lack of information and lack of data that will allow us to actually visualize properly what might be the future of the city. These two images are from early design process of the same street in Cambridge, Massachusetts. Both of them are showing either lack of data or too much information, but both of them are missing the outcome and the result, given that they don't have the information from the game. And lastly, most of these tools are non-interactive and non-interactive to the point where communities, decision makers can take part in an iterative design process. Even a high quality rendering is just solid and fixed and is not really mutable. So the research question behind this paper is how can we really predict the image of the city for not yet existing urban environments? Our team at MIT is building in the last few years, CityScope, an urban modeling, simulation, decision-making platform. CityScope is emphasizing the iterative, interactive, and real-time aspects of planning and allowing decision makers, planners, and general public to come together in decision-making processes. We've built CityScope to help us predict the impact of small urban planning on transportation trends all around the city of Boston, to create different analytics modules for urban planning projects in Germany, to create community engagement and public participation around public transportation planning in the city of Boston, to help find housing for refugees in Hamburg, Germany, as well as to explore the impacts of zoning and regulations in an iterative and interactive way in the city of Cambridge. However, one missing part from our CityScope platform was always the ability to visualize the physical outcomes and the image of the city of that iterative design process. 
preliminary work include the augmented urban planning workbench paper by Hiroshi Ishii and Aran Ben Joseph from 2002 that physically positioned a video camera inside a physical three-dimensional model and was trying to show how an iterative process can happen when we visualize the street view in real time. The DeepScope platform is an interactive, iterative urban design, urban planning platform that allow users to change the design in real time and then observe the street view through their interaction. The DeepScope allows users to design a streetscape, which is then being translated into a three-dimensional model. This model is then being fed into a neural network, which is then generates realistic street view images with each design iteration. Here, the users are designing that streetscape, including buildings, parks, sidewalks, parking lots, and different other land uses, while the generative adversarial network is creating real-time street view. To transition from the tangible user interface, the street view, we've used a DC GAN model. Since the 1980s, it is known that neural networks are capable of finding patterns within existing data. However, concatenating an existing data and creating new data sets is still considered a hard problem in neural networks. In 2014, generative adversarial networks were invented by Ian Gottfellow, in which two competing networks, a generator and a discriminator, are aiming to create new data sets from learned data. GANs became very quickly a prominent part of neural network research, given the fact that they are capable of creating new data that well concatenates existing data sets. The idea behind GANs is exemplified in the art critic video. A street artist, bottom right, is trying to create a fake Mona Lisa image. The art critic, that is the discriminator network, is trying to nullify those creations. The process of training the neural network is when the generator is creating data examples and the art critic is then trying to nullify them. This process is ending when the discriminator is incapable of deciphering the results of the generator. At that point, users can take the generator by itself in order to create new images or new data that concatenates the learned data set. For the purpose of DeepScope, we had to find a data set that creates the image of street view and impose that into our model. For that purpose, we have used a branch of GANs, which is known as conditional GANs, in which we are not just training the model based on a certain data set, but we also inject what is known as label data, in this case, we can see the label data of each hand-drawn digit injected into the MNIST dataset. For our purposes, we have used a conditional GAN dataset known as Streetscape, in which each data point has two images, a street view image, and then a classification of the street view element. Similar to the GAN process, these two images are used as the training set, and then the generator is trying to create a random image that well concatenates each one of those training images. For the purpose of this project, we've also created some manipulations on the data set in order to reduce the side effects given that this data set was created from a moving vehicle during different days and times. Here are some examples of the training process. We have found that overtraining, what is known as mode collapse, was occurring around 150 epochs and nearly 64 filters is the most suitable. The DeepScope tangible user interface brings together the data set pre-trained GAN model, which is then converted into a TensorFlow JavaScript model. The data flow is as presented. Users interact with the CityScope tangible user interface. Their interaction is being captured by a webcam. This data is then being transferred through server system known as CDIO to the DC GAN model for predictions and the creation of visualizations. Here is an example of converting an existing streetscape upper left to a pixelated version for the tangible user interface, for the interaction, and eventually for the visualization and rendering. Tangible user interface uses Lego bricks that are allowing iterative and interactive process. One unique brick is the observer, which is set the viewport, the field of view, and a perspective similarly to the way Kevin Lynch was creating his view from the road. Joystick was created to have subtle moves of the observer, including movement of the head, finding the right perspective, as well as field of view. 